All right, welcome to the Action Martial Arts Power Hour. This is Alan Goldberg's brainchild. He, we're talking about martial arts. We're talking about martial anything. And I don't know, I'm just going to bring him on because he has a lot to say. Alan, it's your party. Hey, how you doing, guys? Welcome back. And uh, we're, we're here and ready to rock and roll again. And uh, this, tonight we're very honored. We have Ernest the Cat. Remember that, the Cat Miller. Uh, known as a great martial artist. I've seen him fight in many of the senior tournaments also. And uh, the man is in the ring, the, you know, wrestling ring. He's known all over the world. So we're honored to have him with us. And we have uh, our buddy Vinny's with us. And, of course, Lou. We thank Vera Hive for hosting our event. And we are expecting a few other guys to pop in during the night. Uh, but I just want to go over some basic news. Today we just released a new movie called Breath. Okay, with my friend Elamar. Um, it's going to be coming out very soon. I'm a producer of that movie also. Uh, 24 hour station. I don't know if as some people know, but we're coming out with a 24 hour a day, seven day a week martial art channel, which is going to have a, a lot of great things on that. We're just working on that right now. Hopefully, within the next three weeks, that'll be up running. Uh, and today, uh, well, actually, last night, I should say, uh, we'll be doing another Hall of Honors in Moscow, in 2023. I'm working with um, Mr. Fabio, uh, great guy. Uh, he's actually a Duke, believe it or not, in uh, the Canary Islands, Spain. Um, wonderful guy, and Wing Chun guy also. So we're, we're really looking forward to be popping of what we're doing. So uh, no further ado, I'd love to bring Ernest in and just tell us what he's doing. Uh, and then we'll go from there. Ernest. All right, Ernest, I'm bringing in Vinny, too. Okay, but you got to know something, Ernest. We're all our together. Show, okay. Our show is about a little bit of interviews, but it's also about being a bunch of goofballs and having a good time. Hey, we talk I'm about everything, man. Wait until Vinny starts man. going. Wait until Vinny starts going. It's going to be something. <laughs> <laughs> So I like sitting, seeing Vinny nice and crisp with the video. I love it. I love it. Yeah, you're hardwired today. Yeah, because because when you got a delay and you're telling jokes, you look like one of these nutbags walking up and down the street talking to himself. <laughs> <laughs> the chin, baby, the chin. <laughs> the chin. The chin, yeah. The robe and the slippers. The robe and yeah. the slippers. Oh, my God. That's right. Them out of jail for a while. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so, Kat, what's going on? What, what's going on in your world? Hey, man, you know, everything is good. It's a little different with the times now, you know, with this quarantine, coronavirus, you know, but it's kind of funny. I've been able to kind of stay busy even during these times. I'm, I'm filming a TV show with a major network, going to be huge with, it's about martial arts and my karate and my wrestling career kind of combined. So, you know, that's something I want you guys, I'm almost definitely let you guys know when it's coming out. So I'm working on that. I'm working on a movie called The Replaceable with a lot of different uh, old wrestlers, I like to call them. Uh, mean Barbarian, Glacier, Larry Sabisco, the, uh, let me see, in the hammer. So, you know, all these guys, we working on a movie called Replaceable, which we finishing up right now. Smart like me, keep the pad next to him all the time. To write exactly. that. I mean, you, yeah. you got to, you got to. We can't yeah. remember all this stuff. So you're going to have no. the legend Larry Zabisco over there. That's good. That, that's oh, man, you know, I did not realize uh, that Larry was a real martial artist. He was a really? true martial artist back in the day, yes. And, you know, he told me his whole life story, dealing with himself growing up being a martial artist first, then he got into pro wrestling, and, uh, you know, that way he became famous as a wrestler. But, it's, it's, you know, his background is martial arts. You know, mm. that's, that's good to know. See, got to jot that down, Vinny, because we need to know this for later. Well, let me say, um, I rem you know Herbert Jefferson Jr., right, Ernest? Yes, yes, I know. Yeah, I do know Herbert. Yes. So we were we were at Great. the Beverly Hills Karate Center at at, at um, oh God, uh, Mio Fargus's dojo, 
and he was telling me about you. And he's and he says, Vinny, you gotta sit down and hear about this guy, the cat. And and then started to tell me how you got your nickname the cat. So mm -hmm. I want to hear it directly from the cat, why they called him the cat, because I heard two versions. Okay, my version is, you know, I got into pro wrestling at 35. I, I played, as you guys may know or may not know, I played pro football up until about 28 with New England Patriots, New York Jets. So after that career was over, I wanted to, I was trying to figure out what I want to do with my life. And I wanted something, I wanted to stay competitive. I wanted to do something that I really love. So I went back into martial arts. I started teaching karate for Joe Corley. And there at Joe Corley studio, I met Eric Bischoff, who wasn't just a black belt from up in Minnesota. He was also the president of uh, World Championship Wrestling. So he saw me out on the floor working with some kids, flipping around. He was like, he came up to me and said, man, you sound like Muhammad Ali. He said, you're a hell of a karate fighter. So, you know, he got me into pro wrestling. So when I got into pro wrestling at 35, I realized like these cats are crazy. They doing stuff they don't really have to do and they kind of putting themselves in danger if you don't take control. So what they asked me to do is, when they asked me to come off the top rope and do stuff, I said, I don't feel comfortable putting myself into somebody else's hand, my safety. So what I decided to do, anything I do in the ring, if it's out of the ring, inside the ring, flipping, body slam, I want to be able to land on my feet. So no matter what they did to me, they can throw me up as they could. I will always land on my feet. So they'll be like, he's like a cat. You know, he's always on his feet. So that name kind of stuck with me. You know, Ernest Miller, the cat, it kind of stuck with me because I will always land on my feet. And all that came from just martial arts, my karate background. Now you got your answer, Ben. You got your answer. They're awesome. Let, let, let me just jump in for a minute. Because uh, Lou, I, heard I, Lou, I sent you an email to send Lou, uh, send um, Tempo Joe the, the link. Okay? Okay. So anyway. I'm, I'm on so that, it. That, that's it. You're out of Georgia, correct? Yes, I am. I, I, I kind of div I, I split my time between Georgia and California. Okay. And I'm sure California. But okay. lately, I've been in Georgia because I've been working on a TV show. They make Guyver TV shows, 6 yeah. p.m. They come on CBS Friday nights at 8 o'clock. I play Lieutenant Walker on that show, so I got a reoccurring role on that show. So cool. that's shoot here in Atlanta. Cool. Well, I, actually, my my sisters lives down there, and my instructor Jason Lau. I know. You oh, Jason! Him. Yeah, that's my. I, I'm his number one student for over forty five years. Wow! So I'm I'm back and forth, you know, my family and Jason down there, and uh, you know, we have we have a great time, and you know, just the stories about us years ago. I mean, many people couldn't believe some of the things we did, <laughs> and then he, then he moved down to Georgia, but uh, we had some great time. But I love Georgia; it's a beautiful, yeah. beautiful area. And Good Kat, boy. I gotta forewarn you that we're gonna have someone that's gonna come in here. This dude has information on you that you don't even think is out there. And anyone I know is out there. You know, <laughs> I know it's out there. I'm ready for it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he, he talks about that. Last time they last time they said that. What happened, Ben? The last time I said that, Ernest, this guy came up with a photo of my colon with an apple core I had when I was six. <laughs> Believe me, they'll find something. He, he knew he knew of any took body, so let's put it that way. Oh my goodness. <laughs> like he went you to don't think Island. I got the goods on you? Look at this. Well, yeah, we, you know, we we always got Craig and I always tell people this show is I mean, we're very honest about it. We have no idea what the hell we're doing. But if we all yeah. do it together, it sounds like we know what the hell we're doing. So. Yeah, yeah. Take a good team. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah, we, we just sit out. Vinny, is anything, anything up with you? I know you were waiting for a couple of roles and different things that were coming up. Do you know anything yet? Well, nobody knows on the one role that's still up in the air. The other two roles are down the, the um, um, Chaz Pommeltary thing. So that okay. we're waiting on. And then uh, Joe's show starts uh, next month. 
they already filmed the pilot a while back. Uh, but which, which show again, is this then? I'm not allowed. I can't. I'm not allowed to really talk about it. I'm not allowed to, to we'll say call, anything about we're it. We're gonna call it the but show. Joe Joe's got a new show. Joe Montaigne's got a new show coming out. Uh, Joe the show. I think it's on Amazon. Joe the show. That's what we and, got. Uh, Joe the yeah. show. Yeah. Right. yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how much of it. You know me, man. You know. With Italians, they tell us like you. You know what? Uh, it's better that you have uh, Alzheimer's and memory loss. You stay out of a lot of jackpots like that. You know what I mean? I know you know what I'm talking about, Ernest. You've been on the East yeah, Coast, right? You I know. know. <laughs> I know. I know. You know, I lived in uh, I lived in Connecticut for about maybe three or four years, and uh, I'm telling you, man, nothing like the New York, Connecticut area, man. Love it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I remember, I remember back in the day when WWE, I think it was a WWF at the time, it was hitting a brick wall. They were renting space yeah, yeah. in uh, at that Titan Tower because they were having yeah. some issues, you know, during that time. But look at them now. Oh, oh yeah, they, yeah, they they blew up. They blew up. Yeah, yes. I, I remember I was at the Cauliflower Alley uh, the thing. I think it was in '97, and I was there in uh, Triple H. That was the first time I met him with with uh, Killer Kowalski because he was a student, and he was oh, a young guy, long hair, everything else. And Killer uh, Kowalski shook my hand, his whole hand, and golfed my whole arm. And I was like, <laughs> "That's a big hand." Yeah, you know, but that was the first time that I that I saw uh, Hunter. It's the first time I saw him, Triple H, Paul, and uh, look at him now. He's he's running the WWE. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, Amazing. yeah. He's he. Hey, hey, he's he's in the family now. Sure, he's in the family. Yeah, he, he's so, if he knows how that works when you're in the family, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can there. see. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, Kat, there's only two ways out: feet first. <laughs> yeah, uh, cat. You know, you you had a you had a, a thing. And I think it was either WCW or WWE that you were with James WCW. Brown. Oh, that was with WCW. And, uh, that was one of my highlights right there. Of course, working with, I did something with Muhammad Ali too, but working yeah. with James uh, Brown, man, I, I grew up watching James Brown, loving James Brown. And when I had the opportunity to work with him, man, it was just, it was just, I just can't even express how much joy it was to be able to be around somebody like that. I mean, he was encouraging. And besides, he gave me three of those robes and capes. He put it on my. He put body. it on you, and that was <laughs> it. He put it on me, and that put that put me in the history book because he only he only caped two men: that Michael Jackson and Ernest the Cat Miller. And it's in the history book where it said Jay Brown was there. But you know, to find out cool. the capes are worth a lot of money. You know, I didn't think about it until. One day somebody read to me and they called me and they said, listen, this guy looking for you and he wanted to buy your cakes. I was like, are you crazy? I would never sell no cake, but yeah. oh, he said they worth a lot of money. And I remember Jane Brown leaving the capes in my, in my uh, dressing room. He said, turn around. He said, cat, make sure you keep those. And I was, oh, I am. I'm most definitely going to keep those. Yeah. So I got hanging on my wall right now. You know, oh. and they're worth more to oh. you than you know. No matter how much money, yeah, you're no money. yeah. Yes. yeah. But you, yes. you're doing yeah. you're doing good you're now, thank God. That's that's important. You know, I I just spoke to Dan Severn the other day. Oh and, yeah, I like Dan. Yeah. Yeah. Dan's a great guy, and he was telling me he says, "Alan, COVID did wonderful for me. He's I'm doing great." He goes, As "A matter of fact, we're going to have him on in a couple of weeks." And uh, he was so excited. You know, we're talking about this, that, and other projects that he's working on. Dan's a great guy. I mean, I've been friends with Dan since the first UFC. So mm -hmm. Dan, Dan and I go back a long way. But uh, what a wonderful gentleman also and anything else. You know, I met Dan and uh, Don Fry and some guy. Don's a good guy, too. They call Morocco or something. He was one yeah. of the UFC guys. I, I can't remember his name. But this is when I first got into pro wrestling. Eric Bischoff, who was the president, wanted me to get into the pro wrestling business to get me into this new mixed martial art, which mm -hmm. was getting a the UFC. They said, but the way we're going to do it, we're going to bring you here. We're going to put you in WCW. We're going to send you to Japan just to build your name up. Then you're going to come back here, and, you know, we want you to fight in the UFC. So 
I remember having lunch with Eric Bischoff. He called me. He said, won't you come down and have lunch with I want to introduce you to some guys. And he introduced me to Dan, uh, 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 Shamrock, and this guy Morocco. And they was all in the UFC, ultimate challenge then. And they were just telling me. And one of the things they told me, they said, listen, Ernest, if you can make more money with WCW, I would do that instead of – we're not hardly making any money at the UFC at that time. He yeah. said, you be fighting our butts off. And he just said, you're really not getting anything. And I think Dan Fry, Don Fry wanted to get into uh, – and Shamrock wanted to get into uh, wrestling at that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. It was right. an interesting meeting, man. I've never met those guys until that one time. And that, and that advice to me is like, if you can make money in WCW, go for the money. Don't come yeah. – because yeah, you know, yeah, because that was that, that, that was the beginning with the UFC. That's when yeah. um, that's it. Yeah, you know, because there, there was no, no there money. was no money back. There was no money, a lot no of legal money. problems. Even, no money. Even Don Fry, yeah, exactly. he never really got that much far into it because just his back went out and other things. But Dan, Dan did well. Dan made some good Dan money did really fighting. Well. And Dan told me that he sat down when he did his, his uh, wrestling contract. And he would not sign anything until it fit 100% criteria. And I give him a lot of credit for that because oh, I'm yes, one yes. of it that way. But uh, yes. as a matter of fact, just want to tell the audience so they'll know for next week too, we have uh, my buddy Ray Mercer on, which I love Ray. Oh, He's, big Ray. Yeah, Ray. Yes. Yeah, what a great guy. I steal his brother. Yeah. And I, we have we have our really first single woman doing a, a, the show. We've had women on the show, but the first single woman. Besides Trina, she's our cook. Okay, she's a master also. <laughs> but we have uh, Kathy Long coming on next week. Ah. Oh, Kathy Long, oh, yeah. And she's, she's in you know, LA, right? She's still in California. Yeah, well, uh, she moved out of there. She's living up up uh, north more, so she's not okay. in LA anymore. But a uh, great woman. Uh, we've been friends for years, and I'm, I'm glad you know she comes around and does some great things now in the kickboxing field. She's still out there teaching and doing her stuff, so you, know, you got to give her credit for that too. Yeah, that's so, uh, pretty happy about that. But uh, let's just get back to yourself now. You're, you're doing a TV series, you said? Yes, with um, the MacGyver TV show. The MacGyver TV show that comes okay. up. Now, when, when were you on that list? I was on there about maybe January or February. Okay. Was it? Was episode, I saw yeah. you. I saw you on it, and I kept saying, "Boy, this guy looks familiar." I was like, Who the hell is- <laughs> yeah, his military uniform on. So I got a the new season's getting ready to start. So I'm looking to be on there even more now. You know, as my character is developed, mm-hmm. I say I'm working on the TV show, a kind of reality based TV show, and uh, I can't say the network, but we've already shot the show, the pilot, and everything really? is wow, you know. Good. So, and, and I also, you know, being a martial artist, I still like to keep my finger in the martial arts world. Mm-hmm. So what I decided to do over the past couple of months is develop my own karate league. And it's a, really? league that, it's a professional league, a pro point fighting. And we've been all over the internet. We got a million and a half followers. Really? You know, we've just finished our fourth show. You know, it's on pay-per-view. But this time, you know, the live live event was even better than the um, pay-per-view shows. So, you know, it just take what I love to do most, point fighting, and now we got it at a professional level mm-hmm. to what athletes are paid and treated like professional athletes. That's yeah, the big that's, thing. That's yeah, we fly them in. Yes, we fly them in. We, uh, and we don't make a lot of money off of this. You know, we got sponsors and to make, you know, it's like this is my way to give back to something that gave me so much. Cause I started karate when I was 11 years old. I was in a bad area of town. My family didn't have a lot of money. So the only thing that I could do was to go to a karate class that I couldn't really pay for. Mm-hmm. So my te- a great teacher, Ronald Walker, uh, everybody knew him around the Georgia area. And um, he started teaching me karate. And then, you know, uh, that led, you know, here I am, 57, still making money for something he taught me, you know, and gave, gave me for free, you know. But isn't it out. funny, Kat, that back then the old school guys would go and teach you for free because it wasn't about money. It was about 
passing on the knowledge to other people. And now it's all yeah, it's, dollars, you know. Lou, Lou, what yeah. are you talking about? I still teach a lot of guys. Oh, yeah, about that. true, but you're old yeah. school, Alan. You're old school. Yes. You know, that, that's yes. what it comes down to. You, these, you have these other guys, they're, they're making money. You know, like the Tiger Schulmans and everything, they're making tons of money from it. You know, no, no, no. I mean, it is what it is. But it's, it, yeah. it's very funny you said that because it falls right into one of the things I did want to talk about. And it came up, and I'm not going to mention names and stuff, but there are different ends of what we do in this industry, such as the, the pro fighters and the amateur fighters, so on and so forth. And then you have this whole group of people that call it educational martial arts, okay, mm -hmm. which I call daycare centers, okay? Yeah. And you, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And, yeah, you know, Vinny's out of, out of the ghetto like I am when we came to our martial arts, you said to you, whatever, because... We didn't know any better. We saw something that was completely different world, mm -hmm. but it enticed us. And I, I, mm -hmm. I, I'm, again, I won't mention it, but I went to a couple of events that were the quote unquote business opportunities for martial artists. And I go to people that had no idea what the hell they were doing in martial arts with 600 students. And, yeah. I, and then they have these guys teaching you how to get 600 students. Now, to me, a lot of it is luck. You gotta be in the right place, location, location, location. Mm -hmm. All right. But the, the real truth of the matter is I watch some of these guys with their teaching and I go, how many times could you teach somebody to run a birthday party in a martial arts school? How many mm -hmm. times are you going to tell, you know, put a, put a sign up here, put a sign up here, do this, do that. You could only teach them one time the little secret you think, you know, and then that's it. But these guys are making, and I mean, I hate to say that these guys are making tons of money mm -hmm. off the public. Yeah. And it just drives me nuts. And I just had a call late last night before I came through, a guy that was talking to one of these guys in it. And this guy charges hundreds upon hundreds of dollars for consulting on how to open up their martial arts schools correctly. Yeah. Um, I've never was in that. I know probably Ernest and, and, and Vinny are never in that. We do what we do because we love it. We'd love, We'd, to love make it. Money. We'd love to make money doing it, but that's not our... our perspective of what martial arts is and uh, you know i, I, I think it balances Go on, man. I, I think it, it balances listen if you don't have your cream of the crop students that are funding you're not you can't then give away to the ones that need it that can't pay because you got to put food on the table yeah. i mean one really does balance the other out so yeah. as um, long as I mean it's you, it, you, to make money on it to, to, to do that is fine. Yeah. It's to people. I, I mean, I see it too. That that's all they think about, and they don't give back. That's where you. That's why I was going to say to you, you know. that comes into the selling of ranks. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then but, but, and then you know. But you know, and with me, I've like I said, I've, I've done everything I wanted to do in life. As a little boy, I, I wanted to be the best karate black belt teacher around. I wanted to play pro football. I wanted to be on TV doing stuff. I wanted to be in the movie, you know, doing karate. And here I am, a movie part. I was in a movie, The Wrestler with Mickey Rourke. Right, when I right. played wrestler. But then I was in The Legend of Bruce Lee with Michael Jai White. We shot in China. Uh, I was in Blood and Bone with Michael Jai White, who mm -hmm. is a good friend of mine as well. And, and, mine and too. Yep. he talked highly of you, you know, and, um, you know, so I've learned to take what I've learned from karate mm -hmm. to make me a better person. And because I am that person, I've been able to do a lot of things because people can see that good person in me. Yeah. You know, they see that this guy's a giver, this guy's trustworthy, he's he's he gonna have my back. So this is the kind of guy that I want to bring into my room mm -hmm. and and on the other hand, I'm just being a great martial artist. Even as a father, I think of myself as a great martial artist. So that helped lead me and guide me sometime mm -hmm. to do as a father that, you know, you would imagine Bruce Lee doing in a fair fight, you know? Right. So, right. You know, well, so yeah. it's, not, it's not me making money from this stuff. It's just martial arts put in me, the person that I am, that's been able to be pretty successful. Like I said, I've done a lot of things in my life, 57 years old, and and I got a lot of things that I'm reaching for and mm -hmm. want to continue. You know, in pro wrestling, pro wrestling was the hardest thing I've ever had to do before. 
Because mm-hmm. remember, I was 35 years old. I never wanted to be a pro wrestler. It came to me. No, and the guy right. who told me to get me away from karate, he said, listen, I'm going to go out. You can come to pro wrestling and work for me. I can make your name bigger. You can come back and teach more kids because we know how you are. We You want to teach. Mm-hmm. You can come back and teach the kid. And you can make a lot of money. I'm, I'm going to make you a wealthy man. That's what their bishop told me. That was well, good. But what got me to go was I thought about kids would probably want to listen to me even more if I had wrestling persona behind my, you know, behind me. So yeah. I went to wrestling, and it took me five years. Now, I want you to understand this. You guys watch, Lou, I know you watch wrestling. Oh, yeah. Well, I was in a ring myself for, for a while. Used to wrestle with, with Nightheart so, and everything. So you understand this. To get to a Monday Night Nitro or to get to the level of WCW or WWE, these guys been working there since they were little kids. Yep. Triple H probably been in the business about 30, 40 years. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of guys been in the business so long that they finally got their big shot at the big time. I was in the business for about three months before I ended up on one of the biggest pay-per-views on really? WCW. Yeah, man, and then from big, I took off, you know, because I was it's my martial arts way. Mm-hmm. I was able to fight and defeat whatever thing laid in front of me. That's what that's my martial art words right there. Defeat whatever tried to stop me. And in this business, it was a business. I didn't look at it like it was just uh, entertainment or something to make me look good. It, I'm in a business now, so I got to tr- conquer this business. I can't let it break me. So mm-hmm. I ended up being one of the wrestlers on Monday Night Nitro in five years of wrestling. That's unheard of. Nobody had ever, what they call it in wrestling, you get over. Yeah. I got over in five years of just wrestling to where I was one of the top paid wrestlers I had some of the highest buy rates or the high ratings on, on the show to where they put me in charge of the show. Matter of fact, <laughs> I got so high one time that H- Hogan did something he never ever wanted to do. Hogan went to the office, Eric Bischoff and the crew and said, listen, he's over. The crowd really like him. They love to hate him. They love to boo him. They like to cheer him. Hogan said, I want to lose the championship, world championship belt to him. Really? His first wow. ever said that he wanted to lose the belt to me, but Eric Bischoff said no. And the reason Eric explained, he said no because I was on my way to winning it, and he wanted me to keep it for a while, not just win it, lose yeah. it, win it one week, then lose it to him the next week. But it was to me, it was such a great gratitude and a great thing for Hogan to even think that you know yeah, he, 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 he that. wouldn't do that for anyone really when he dropped the to, to, to the ultimate war that was a whole big thing and that was probably yes. the biggest thing because it was supposed to go and pass the torch on to the next person but uh, for him to do that you know he, he must have thought the world of you hey i was over man i mean but you know what i would look that as a loner you know because right. in the wrestling mm-hmm. world there wasn't too many martial arts guys like me and this is funny. I grew up during the time when Bruce Lee and uh, David Carradine, when karate guys didn't drink, we right. didn't smoke. We used to help old people. We used to fight for those who couldn't fight for yeah. themselves. So I grew up in that era. That's what I thought a martial artist was all about. Yep. So that's how I grew up. And I didn't know I was going to go from five nine to six feet three when I was 15 years old. <laughs> so this strength and power, you know, it's like, it was so funny. Here I am, this big athletic guy, but then all my friends was the nerds, the nerdy guys. You right. know, nobody pick on them because they had big Ernest Miller, his world karate champion in black belt, as they as a friend. So it was still my martial arts that kept me. I think you know, that I, I think the martial arts was was your base that actually people have respected and where you went. Yeah. And I mean yeah. I got I got a friend like like Ray Mercer I read, mentioned before. Yes. Ray loves coming to my event because he says what you guys have in the martial arts, us as boxers never had. He goes, we didn't have that respect factor between each other. You could beat the crap out of each other. And we had Oso Tayari Kasal on last week. 
and him and John and, and uh, Benny the Jet, they're best friends now after their fights. Mm -hmm. So to us, you know, the martial arts, even though you may not like the guy to begin with, you wind up getting respect for him. We got Joe on, Joe Kempo Joe, uh, uh, we call him Wikipedia Joe. Yeah, Ooh, uh -huh. you got him, you got him on right. the speaker? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to bring him on in a second, but I wanted to say something to Kat. You know, you mentioned how you won uh, Monday Night Nitro and they gave you that big boost and everything. Okay. Yeah. It takes, and you mentioned this, it takes wrestlers a long time to even get to that point. Usually, you know, they're they're like, you know, maybe the first match out or something. They did not yeah. get the TV time and stuff like that. You know, even when 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 Davy Boy was there and and everybody was there and Nightheart was in I, I don't know if I think he was there when you were there too. Yeah, I've met all those guys. Yes. Yeah, you know, and it was just, just a different animal. And the 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 level of respect they had to have for you to do that had to be amazing. And you know I, what I, they I had what, you know now. what they you know what they learned? They said we can try stuff on other people, but we can't try stuff with him, Ernest. He's real. You know, He's real. You know the funny thing? You know, many people might not notice, but Ernest actually fought at my event. He fought with uh, Lee Ireland's team. Yes, the yes, yes, yes. And uh, I watched one of your fights there, and I looked, I go, I think people were afraid of you in some ways because, oh, of, the wrestling, because of the wrestling, too. Because they saw that viciousness. <laughs> Which was a lot of it was show, of course, because the TV. Exactly, exactly. But <laughs> I, I saw people th thinking you out before they fought you. Well, let's bring Joe on because I know Joe's got some We're gonna bring Joe on, and Joe, Joe, you you, you know the cat, right? Okay, I just need to say yeah. that Joe because I told Vinny about this earlier. Actually, I was telling Alan about it, and you guys are gonna laugh. Okay, you're gonna let you're gonna appreciate this before you get into your Q and A. With, uh, with with Ernie, um, I was watching videos because I was trying to find a video that I had behind me of Joe Lewis and uh, and uh, Superfoot, right? Just to play here, and I'm going through it. And I look for Michael P. Pasquale, which I Junior, which I have over here. You can't see it because it's blurry. And I'm doing that. And I see an interview of 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 him, and you're interviewing him. And brother, you got Jerry Curls coming down here, a big, a big old man. I thought you were going to be saying I was dying. Oh, oh man. my God. I had tears coming down my face. I just think I shared it with you. It was funny. It was funny. Oh, my goodness. I know you love going on here. here. I had more hair changes than black exploitation movies in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had I had the Rock you had the Star, had the was, was all the way killing. down to my backside. Yeah. <laughs> I had the whole soul patch prince look going on. Oh, I went through the George God. Michael hair. All of it, man. I was a child of the 80s. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Oh, my God. Now I'm sweating. Thank you. All right, but now... <laughs> Joe, you you got you got the cat. Okay, I'm gonna get you out for two yeah. minutes, okay? I'm so psyched because I gotta tell uh, you, Ernest. I mean, I probably uh, a lot of people know my martial arts career, but what they don't know about is Joe, my professional Joe, wrestling. I, I, Joe, I, Joe, I have to interrupt one second. All right, I have a guy that's on the phone right now that I just want him to say hello because a lot of people are very concerned about him. It's my dear brother, Michael T. Pasquale. So I'm gonna make say something to everybody. Hey! Hey! Hello, hey! Hey, Michael! Hello, Michael. Good to hear everybody. How's everything going? Good, brother. Hey, How good. are you? I'm great. Uh, I've been I've been better, but I'm all okay. I'm working through the stupid uh, operation I had that put me in a wheelchair. Wow. So um, still uh, still doing a lot of therapy, but I'm okay. I'm uh, eventually I'll be back on my feet. I don't know when I'm not quite there yet. But You'll I'm get getting there. stronger. Yeah. You'll get there. It takes, it takes a lot. It takes a long time. It's been nine months, and um, boy, a lot of therapy and a lot of ups and downs, and uh, almost bit the dust there at one point. Oh, um, okay. Well, we're gonna be saying some prayers to you, Michael. Yeah, you know, we miss you. I wanted to bring Michael on because I just get emails every day of him from Facebook and stuff like that, asking about him. And I know, you know, Michael wants his privacy in some ways and when people call him and stuff. So I speak to him at least once a week. And I said, Mike, please come on the show and just talk a little bit. We didn't want to get him on the camera. Uh, I don't just... mind. I love everybody out there. So. I just been kind of 
working and focusing on one thing and one thing only. That's getting back on my feet. Yeah. I still have Dojo, the Dojo being run by Rocky and the guys. I they, they completely run the whole thing now. I don't have anything to do with it right now. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Mike, I got to tell you something. I, I'm making plans in, ready for this, 2023 in Moscow, <laughs> Russia, for the Action Martial Arts Hall of Fame. And I, I, I definitely need you by my side there, so get your ass well. And, uh, I, I, hey, I miss you, bro. I'll be there by, I'll be there by your side, I promise you. Okay, buddy. Well, we're going to let you by and just you know, have the audience know that you're doing well. We're coming along, and we're so goddamn happy to have you on the phone. Yeah, you know, it's a lot of work, a lot of ups and downs, and uh, I'll continue on this mission, get back to where I was, be at least part of the where I was before. But they screwed up this back surgery when I had a, a couple discs that uh, were pushing into my spinal column, and uh, I ended up waking up. I was on a, uh, working for the first two days, and I got a blood clot, and it put me in a damn wheelchair. Wow. So, we want to we want to say we all love you and we'll catch you up with you soon, Mikey. All right. I love you guys, all of you. All right, God bless. Amen. Hey, miss you. God bless. I thought that would surprise everyone. Would be happy. Yeah, thank you. That's a good you know, surprise. I mean, good he, surprise. He's, he hasn't spoken to too many people, and uh, yeah. so I kind of pushed him to come on and at least say a few words because so many people are concerned about him. Great, great man. He's like my brother. Like my brother. Yeah. Anyway, well, Joe, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but no, I that no, I'm, I'm so glad to hear that. Believe me, yeah. we're hearing Michael's yeah, voice. I know you'd be excited because everyone loves Michael that yeah. knows Michael. So, yeah. anyway, Michael Joe, to me. you're back on. Go on, buddy. I'm sorry. You bet. All right. So, you know, a lot of people know about my martial arts career, but what they don't know about is my professional wrestling career. I started back in 1985 with Joe Eugenio in New Bedford. And uh, I, I met a young man who was an announcer on a, on AWA by the name of Eric Bischoff. Yes. He was in the party circuit. And I people know about. And <clears throat> somewhere in this vast museum, I actually have a set of uh, Eric Bischoff's product, the Karate Star Wars, with his little ninja yes. game. But yes. uh, I, I literally am probably one of the only individuals who probably have your entire TV wrestling career on video. What? Every right. single <laughs> Leave it to Joe. Leave it to Joe. Every, every week. It. So, uh, you know, and, um, you know, people, people remember the early leotard and uh, the, the cat motif <laughs> all the way to the James Brown imitation and the blue suede shoes and the velvet shoes and how you were rocking imitating James Brown. Okay. <laughs> you got some great gimmicks going on. Um, yeah. You know, yes. thanks to Eric Bischoff, thanks to Eric Bischoff, he allowed me to do all that, man. And uh, I'd like to say congratulations to Eric Bischoff. And you guys may not mm -hmm. he'll be inducted into the Hall of WWE Hall of Fame this year. Finally, finally. Good for him. It's, it's amazing. If you had ever told someone 10 years ago that Eric Bischoff from WCW would be inducted <laughs> into the WWE Hall of Fame, they'd have told you you were completely insane. Crazy. Yes. Amazing. You know, well, like, like, like his book says, controversy creates cash. Yeah. You know, yes. you know but, but think now, about it. They, they held, question. they held the bull, British bulldog out of the Hall of Fame for a long time, for a long time. I would talk to Diana about it. <coughs> I think nobody understood why. But now, with all the pushing and everything, he's. In the what about fame. China? What about China? Yeah. She's in yeah. The yeah. Hall of Fame. Yeah, because nobody I'll tell you, I for it. Go ahead. <laughs> I knew Joni when Joni was training with Walter Kowalski. Actually, yeah. a gentleman that I know, Dan Boylette, he yeah. actually gave her first black eye in training. Oh. And um, wow. I, I actually saw her in, in uh, Paul. And I knew Paul when Paul used to travel with Perry Saturn and they'd go to <laughs> Walter's place up in Malden and then they'd come down and Perry would work in local cards in New Bedford. And Paul wouldn't work with him. Paul wouldn't work hey. with Joey Dean. I don't know why. I heard. But, um, I got I had some stories about Triple H. I got some good old stories about Triple H because I used to travel <laughs> with Harry Saturn down in WCW. Man, do I have there some you go. Stories. You guys are getting yeah. that in my book. Once my book come out, I'm telling everything. <laughs> you got to. You know, if you ever wrote with Hawk, you you would not be able to get any sleep. <laughs> you know, Ernest, Ernest, the funny thing about it, when I told, told Joe you were going to be on, I said something, I know how excited he was, but if you ever need anything on yourself, he got it, he knows it, uh, we oh, call wow. him Wicked, 
Wikipedia Joe because he remembers everything. Everything. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I've got to. You got to be careful with your that one too. With Joe. When I first met him, I was going to knock him out because he knew too much about me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I really, I, you know, and it, you know, Ernest is kind of funny because the first time we met was at the Action Martial Arts. Well, actually, that's not true. I had met you. You used to compete. A lot of people know about you competing in New York and area, but you used to compete in New England occasionally. Uh, all, all the time. That's why I started at New, well, not started, but New England. I would come down to New York, too. With Jerry Fonnez and and uh, you know, Fast Feet, uh, Michael Jai White, Mike Conroy, we used to all come. I trained with those guys. I'm yeah, gonna make you. I'm gonna make you laugh. While we were on the show, I just got a call from Lamar Fortin. So that's an old name. Oh yeah, group. Lamar. He just that's called it. me. I gotta call him back. <laughs> that's his tournament. I used to come down to his tournament. I know. I know. His tournament. Yeah. Good guy, good guy. But at that time, I, at that time, I was playing and trying out with New England, New England Patriot. So Great. they would tell me, you know, you got practice tomorrow. Don't go to a tournament. And I would sneak away and come go fight, then go back to the um, compound. So it was kind of funny. You and Andre Tippett, because it was you, yeah, Andre, Andre Tippett. Tippett. Billy Blanks, occasionally Steve yep. Nasty Anderson when he came in from the West Coast. Oh, yep. yeah. A lot of guys from Billy School, like Ron Payton and whatnot. Oh yeah, I mean, but like I said, I was there. I used to come. I used to judge. Yeah, I was the first. I was on the first team sponsored by Paul Mitchell. I was their yeah. first heavyweight. Right, right. Well, I yeah, know. I know. Joe couldn't excited, get on man. the show tonight. He was going to sneak to someone's house to get on the camera. Oh, he was going to figure it out. <laughs> he had a plan. Yeah. He had a plan. He was going to break into somebody's house, go through the window. He, he's just like a ninja when it comes to the show. He needs to get I don't know if you. I don't know if you guys know, but right behind Lou's shoulder, there's a lot of your fights on there, Ernest. He's playing them right behind you there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see those. Yes, yes. Anyway. All right. Well, listen, I, I'm sorry Joe got in late. We had another <laughs> guest that was going to come on. Uh, we'll try to get him on next week. Uh, Soki Tom Gettling, good friend. Tough guy, he knows his martial arts unbelievably, and stand-up guy. So hopefully next week we get him on also. And I just want to do our little round robin because I think we're coming kind of close to the end of the show. So okay. uh, let's let's hit it up with Vinny first. Vinny, anything to say? I was laughing. He's talking about John Paul Mitchell, how he sponsored the events, and we did. Uh, we brought Moses Powell out. We did a big event with him, right? And I go. Okay, here we go. Half the nation is there, right? Half the nation is here. And where do I get John Paul? He gives me 1,400 hair care product kits to give out to guys with no hair. So that's what I <laughs> – Dr. <laughs> Powell is like, you got to be kidding me. I said <laughs> Hey, Vinny, Vinny. You're not the only one. Look at yeah. this, too. There we go, man. There yeah. we go. Oh, hey, they're oh, blaming you're them. in good company, man. Let's blame it on let's blame it on Paul Mitchell product. Yeah, there you go. I have a loss too. No class action, baby. No. <laughs> no man, I tell you, jump. I made a I made a deal with God a long time ago. I said, God, if you're gonna take it away from me up here, you better give it to me someplace else. Okay? And he did. Are you bragging again? <laughs> No, it's, no, the hair's been growing out of my ears. I got to eat it. That's what I'm saying. And see, I was worried the video was going to get you with your mind in the gutter. Look at you. Unbelievable. Oh, Lord. Actually, I tell you, we, 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 we heard it up right away. We both walked up and both had cowboy boots on with so light wear. And we looked at each other and we said, oh, yeah, those are damn posts. So I'm going to Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we hit it off and start talking, so it was very cool. But anyway, all right, listen, Joe, even though you came in late, we've got to give you a few more minutes. Give us uh, a few of your founding expressions of, of, of what you're doing lately and what, what you feel coming along with you. Actually, well, right now I'm just sending in my videos for the uh, International Kempo Federa uh, Federation. They're running their online e uh, e Kempo uh, virtual tournament. Um, oh, and... All right, but we got him in at least. We got him in. 
Yeah, we're gonna we're anyway. Gonna, yeah, we're gonna take him out. He's done. Okay, okay. Lou. Anything you gotta say before we? Sign uh, off? no. I just I just uh, want to thank everyone for coming, uh, being a part of Vero Hive, and joining what we're doing. We have a lot of things going on. In the next couple of weeks, well, actually, probably next week, you're going to be able to share a video in here. So next time we can actually show videos here. We would have had it for, for you, Kat. We would have showed your video here while we're recording. Yeah. But well, you're going to come on again. You're going to come, come yeah, on again exactly. because, I mean, this is – we're motivating people, inspiring people, making people laugh, doing all this stuff. And we're just getting better and better. As long as we have Vinny here, I'm going to have tears in my eyes every show. All right. But on that note, Ernie, I'm going to, I'm going to pass it to you. Uh, final words? Hey, listen, man, I'm glad to be a part of what you guys are doing, and thanks for the invite. I had a good time. I feel comfortable. I don't feel judged. I feel like I'm in front of fellow martial artists. So thank you guys for having me on. The beginning with us, we don't know what's going to happen, but we do in some ways. But it's about fun, the show. Everyone has yeah. a story. We want everyone yeah. to tell their story, but it's about having fun. And, mm -hmm. you know, we've had great shows and everyone enjoys it. Our, our ratings are getting bigger and bigger and a lot more people watching it. So uh, everyone is excited that you were on. And, hey, all I got to say is until yeah. next week. Yeah. Hey, hey God. Alan, before yes, you go, sir. Alan, though, once this show is picked up on the network, I want people like you on there because I want you to be able to reach some of the kids and some of the people that I'm going to be going after you know, to help. And I, I think I, to hear it from you guys like you would mean a lot to them. Yeah. I'd be honored. I'd be honored. You know, it's a, a lot of a lot of great things. But you realize what's happening. I mean, you know, everyone could attest to this. We as a group should take care of each other. And that's exactly. what it's all about. Yeah. And if we don't do that, then who the hell are we really? So I just want to sign off. I want to thank Lou and Vero High for taking care of us as always. I want to thank uh, Donner Warner Entertainment and again our 24 hour channel, seven days a week, is Amen uh, Network, Action Martial Art Network. will be up soon enough. Mm -hmm. There'll be some great things going on with that. I, I just can't even talk about some of the things that we have planned, but it's going to be it's going to be wonderful. So just signing out one more time next week, Kathy Long and Ray Mercer. Take a look. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Ernest. Thank you, Joe yeah. and Vinny and, and Lou. Yeah. God bless. Great to see you, Arnold. All right. Welcome to Vero Hive and the Power Hour with Alan Goldberg and his crew. My name is Don Warner from WarnerEntertainment.com. We encourage you to visit us at our website and see over 4,000 different martial arts media products, including videos, DVDs, books, and lots, lots more. That's www.warrenerentertainment.com, spelled www.warrenerentertainment.com. And thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>